morning. Hello, how are you? Welcome to J Jane Austen reading vlog, June Austen reading vlog. It's the Platinum Jubilee weekend. Oh, she's all in the bed like a little old lady. Platinum Jubilee weekend. David's gone to play golf for the weekend. So I'm on my own for two days. He's back on Sunday. Today is Friday. Uh, he's back on Sunday. So I thought I would do a reading vlog of um, my weekend and reading and consuming lots of Jane Austen bits. So as I said, today's Friday. Today I'm hoping to, I'm only 54 pages into Pride, Prejudice and Other Flavours by Sonali Dev. I would really like to get towards the business end of this today. I also think I might watch a Jane Austen film tonight, which will be exciting. Um, and I've also bought, a, we went to uh, Goodniston Park yesterday um, and I bought a Jane Austen jigsaw puzzle there so I'd like to start that as well um, and yeah I thought I'd bring you along for the for the ride so you can hear what my thoughts on these so as I said I'm, I'm 54 pages into this so far um, it took me a while to get into it I mean 54 pages I'm still not that into it as in 54 pages isn't that much out of 400 and something um, it, it took me a while to sort of place how these characters were related to the original Pride and Prejudice story. But what I didn't realise is that it's gender flipped. So we're following Trisha Rajay, who is, I think, the character of Darcy. Um, she's a neurosurgeon and she is currently in the middle of um, curing, well, curing a woman called Emma um, of her um, brain tumour, but it is going to mean that she's going to end up blind. Now, that woman, Emma, her brother is called DJ Kane and is a chef, so we're getting into the cooking part of it. I think the DJ Kane character is the Elizabeth Bennet character, and that would mean that Emma is the Jane character. Yeah. Um, there's a lot in here about sort of family politics and people not speaking to each other. We've been slightly introduced to the character of Julia Wickham, Juliet Wickham, um, but nothing's happened with the, the, the dramas with that. But yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to crack on with it. I was a bit I was a bit sad with myself because I had started reading Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Wellesley, which I thought would be a great book because it's nonfiction to intersperse with reading some fiction left it at work didn't I left it at fucking work so um, I haven't got that this weekend so I'm gonna crack on with this and then hopefully as I said get to the business end of this watch a film today do a bit of Jane Austen puzzling Re listen to I've got a BBC adaptation of some J of Jane Austen's book so I'd like to listen to at least one of those today as well hopefully while I'm doing the puzzle and yeah I thought I'd bring you along for the ride so yeah it's 10 past 9 David's literally just left I've made myself a cup of tea I'm gonna sit and read to at least page 100 while I'm here. Where do we go to next? Do you want me to take a look, she asked his back, feeling just the tiniest bit sorry for him. Hmm. I also bought a Jane Austen bookmark yesterday, which says, if a book is well written, I always find it too short. Isn't that lovely? Anyway, let's read. What to do, what to do, what to do? I'm just over, a oh. I'm just over 100 pages through this. I'm not loving it, I'll be honest. I'm finding it quite confusing as to who's who. Maybe I need to sort of forget that it's a reimagining of Pride and Prejudice and read it for the story. There's a couple of things I'm, I'm confused about. First of all, as I said earlier, I thought that the Rajays were the Darcys. But now I've just found out that DJ Kane, who is the character who I thought was Elizabeth Bennet, his first name is Darcy. So, yeah, I'm a bit confused about that. Um... Also, DJ Kane and his sister Emma are um, English, and I often find this in American books, which I'm sure is it completely, this happens for many, many people when they read books which have characters from where they live um, set in a different place. And yeah, so they keep, <laughs> so they, the, the, the things that DJ Kane and Emma keep saying are not English things. Also, they're told that they're British things. Britain covers a large amount of accents from Scottish to Welsh to Northern Irish to English. And even in those places, there's loads and loads of different accents. They're saying feckin' a lot, which is definitely, definitely an Irish thing. Ireland is not part of Britain, <laughs> Great Britain. Um, it is, uh, it, it's, so, and, and also just things like, how often he's saying love to people. In England, people do call each other love. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, there's, there's plenty in here that I'm sort of not really getting on with. I'm going to make myself now a cup of tea and some scrambled egg on Marmite on toast. I love scrambled egg on toast and I love Marmite on toast. So imagine having scrambled egg on Marmite on toast. I'm gonna have that. 
I'm gonna read a bit more. I feel. Let, I'll be back in a minute. Hold on. And I'll need to wrap this up quick because I'm doing the kettle now. Um, I'm gonna carry on with it. I'll give it another 50 pages and see how I'm getting on with it. And then that's 150 pages in. And then see how I feel. I, I just do, I do sometimes feel a bit tempted just to sort of like plow through it. Because I've got nothing on these next two days. But I could be reading something else that I could be enjoying. Anyway, I'm going to make, I've got to go because the kettle's boiling. I'm going to make my breakfast and crack on with that. So, another 50 pages in. I'm going to, I'm going to persevere, I think. Like I said, I'm going to sort of park the, this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling and sort of crack on with it as a sort of like romance women's contemporary fiction book. Uh, the last thing I'll sort of say about, well, hopefully this is the last thing I'll say about the, the language used by the English people in this book, is it really reminds me of um, Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There's like a core set of phrases that they keep getting these people to repeat because they know they're sort of like English words. Bloody being one of them. Bloody hell, bloody hell. Nobbed being another one. And nobbed is a word that a lot of people use. And also knickers. Don't get your knickers in a twist. Oh, she's got her knickers in a twist again. That sort of thing. So yeah, that's continuing. I'm still confused as to where this sort of aligns with the Pride and Prejudice story. Um, we're now, so we're now looking at, so Juliet Wickham, there's a little bit more about her in this now. And um, she is a filmmaker and is trying to make films about um, Trisha Rajay's uh, patients and their sort of journeys um, and yeah so I'm not really sure where this all sort of aligns but we'll, we'll continue there's also like hints at DJ Kane being um, romantically involved with Trisha's cousin um, so yeah there's a lot going on there's a bit more food in there now which I'm more interested in but yeah, Trisha as a main character is not very likeable at all and doesn't have many redeeming features. So um, yeah, that's another reason I was a bit like, oh God, am I going to get on with this? But like I said, I'm going to persevere. So I'm basically a third of the way through now. Um, it is now 10 to 11. I think I'm going to have a shower and get changed. Then I've got a few little chores to do. Not much. I've got to put my washing away. Um, just have a little spruce up, make the bed, etc, etc. So I'm going to do that probably whilst listening to... Shall I do that first? Maybe I'll do that first. Um, maybe whilst listening to an audio book or a podcast. Um, but yeah, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to... I'm going to crack on and I'll check in with you in a bit. But yeah, I'll put that down for a minute. I'm on page 152, so we're, we're over a third of the way through. Yeah. I've done my chores. I was a very good girl, I did my chores, and now I thought I'd treat myself to a daytime bath. Is there anything more treaty than a daytime bath? I really do feel like a daytime bath is a big treat. And I'm going to do the full skincare works, including face mask. Um, so yeah, so it's going to be quite nice in there. And I'm going to read while I'm in the bath. Um, and then I'll get changed. I think I'm going to watch Sense and Sensibility tonight. That's on Amazon Prime, so I think I'm going to watch that. I also want to really want to watch Clueless and Bridget Jones' Diary. Clueless, which is based on Emma, and Bridget Jones' Diary, which is based on Brand and Prejudice. But I know David would quite like to watch those too, so I feel like I'm going to wa wait for David to come home till we watch those. We were desperate for something to watch last night. We couldn't think of anything. We would have been perfect to watch at Clueless last night. Um, so yeah, so I think bath, a little bit more reading, make myself a cup of tea. Um, need to rinse the bath through actually because it looks as though there's a few David Beard hairs in there. Um, and then I'll get changed and then look at the afternoon. Probably start my jigsaw this afternoon and an audio book. Bath! And I've got my Pride and Prejudice t-shirt on. This is from Joni. It's a few years old so I'm not sure if they do it anymore. Check out their website anyway. I love their clothes. Um, and they might have some left in the sale or you might be able to get some on Depop. But yeah. Could this be even more of a perfect t-shirt to wear today? So. We're up to page 208. Um, much of the same sort of like unfolding is going on. Nisha now has to work, uh, sorry, uh, Trisha now has to work uh, very closely with DJ um, because Nisha um, is, her sister is pregnant and um, she's had many miscarriages before and this time she's trying to stay sort of like um, in bed until the first trimester is here at, at, at which point she's going to sort of like resume her normal life and she's in charge of this big fundraiser which their brother who is going for um senator in california senator i think it's senator i think it's like the equivalent of an mp here um 
maybe that's what it is. I don't know. So yeah, so she's just met with thing. She loved his food. That was nice, that bit hearing about that. But yeah, Trisha herself is just so sort of I go further than saying prickly. Like I find her very, very difficult to um to to read about and I don't think she's a very nice person um, and she's very sort of that's what makes me think she's supposed to be the Darcy character um, which is confusing why they might have added in DJ's name being Darcy it's confusing um, and I am finding it a bit confusing and also there's just so many sort of characters and sub plots and things going on what I had a sort of moment of realising when I was in the bath uh, reading is that DJ's sister is called Emma um, there's also We'll get back to that point. But there's a few things in here which I'm sort of thinking, mm, as a plot point, as a sort of like narrative construction, I don't know how sort of ethical that feels like. One of which being that Emma's got to have life-saving um, surgery to save herself from the tumour, but she's going to go blind. And the way that Trisha's sort of talking about this is so flippant. I'm just like, Ugh. And then also this sort of, um, don't want to get out of bed in case I have a miscarriage um, storyline from Nisha, I also think is a bit, Ugh. but. So what I think is happening here is I think this is becoming a sort of like they're building the blocks because this is the first in the series. I've also got the Persuasion one, which I was planning on reading after I'd read Persuasion. But there's a character in here called Emma. And I wonder if the Emma in this is the Emma in the Emma book. Um, and yeah, I think that we're going to I think it's going to be that this family is at the, the centre of all of these sort of um, Jane Austen retellings, I think. I think, because I think Persuasion, in fact I don't have to think, I can go and get it. I think Persuasion is based on somebody else in the family. Oh, it's even bigger than that one. Oh, so this is based on Ashna, who is the cousin in this. So yeah, it sounds as though that's, that's what's happening. So that's. We'll continue. It might just be that I'm not getting on with Trisha, that I'm fine, that I'm struggling with it. But yeah, so that, that I'm going to stop reading for a bit and I'll read a bit more when I'm having my lunch. But now I'm going to listen to a bit of my audiobook and start on my, the world of Jane Austen puzzle. A jigsaw puzzle with 60 characters and great houses to find. Look at this. It's going to be great fun. And then it's got all of these characters around the edge. This is what it's going to look like in the end. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do... A bit of that. Now, as I said, I've got the BBC um, adaptation, uh, the BBC radio plays of the uh, Jane Austen books to listen to, but I'm also listening to an audio book of The Murder of Mr. Wickham by Claudia Gray. Um, I've got this on Libby. And I haven't got as long with this because there's reservations on it. So I need to get this done. So I'm going to listen to like about an hour and a half of this before I think I start on Pride and Prejudice. And then hopefully I'll get Pride and Prejudice done today. I think it's only like four hours long. Um, so yeah, hopefully I should get that done today. But yeah, The Murder of Mr. Wickham is sort of like, imagine the multiverse, <laughs> imagine a Jane Austen multiverse where all of the couples from these books, some of which I'm not familiar with because I haven't read all of Jane Austen's books, but for example, um, Emma and Mr. Knightley are there, um, Elizabeth Bennet and Darcy are there, um, the Marianne and Captain what's his face is there from uh, Sense and Sensibility and they're all at this house party which by the way is lasting a month um, and uh, George Wickham's just turned up and the book is called The Murder of Mr Wickham so I think it's going to be sort of like a murder mystery so I'm already an hour and a half into it I'm quite enjoying it there's a character in there Juliet oh also so uh, Darcy's um, son um I've forgotten his name. Maybe Charles? Maybe Charles um, is looking at this character Juliet in like I think there's gonna be some sort of like romantic thing happening between those two. I don't know where to place the character of Juliet, because I don't recall there being a Juliet in any of the other books. If there is, let me know. It might become clear as I listen more. But yeah, so Mr. Wickham's turned up, he's being a prick, as is the case. Um, we've just found out that Lydia died about four years ago. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna so there's obviously gonna be a murder of George Wickham, and then we'll see what's going on for that. So that's what I'm gonna start with, and then I'm going to start with, as you always do, getting the edge pieces from this. I'm very, very excited to do this. I haven't done a puzzle in a long time. Oh, look. So it's got, oh, it's lovely. This is a lovely gift for someone who's into um, Jane Austen. This is the scene that I'll be doing. And then on the back, which I loved, this is similar to, I had one that my, my friend Emma bought me for my birthday, which was a Frida Kahlo one and sort of like went into detail about each of the pieces of art. It's got all of the characters and then... It, it's got a little spiel on them here. So Jane Austen is featured. And it said, we find Jane Austen one in front of her home in the small village of Chawton in Hampshire, where she wrote all six of her completed novels. The house was owned by her. So this is really good. So it sort of talk you through who's there. And there is Jane Austen. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by sorting out all the edge pieces, putting those to one side. And then um, 
and then I guess I'll start on the puzzle. So yeah, you don't need to watch me. Do well, I mean, I'm going to listen to the audiobook. And oh, and also look, it's a bag that's resealable, so you, you can just put them straight back in. Lovely. Oh no, because I don't want to do it in that, because I'll need that. I'm going to put it in there. And edge pieces, let us go. Once even with his Aunt Jane and Uncle Charles. I mean there are some missing as always is the case that I've overlooked when but um yeah I've done the outline it looks like it's gonna be pretty big um and I think I mean how do other people do puzzles because I think I'm gonna now pull out everything that's this sort of blue and then I'll do the blue and maybe there'll be blue here and blue there so then I'll have those bits as well but then that connects with there I think that's what I'm gonna do <sighs> I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do to the end of this chapter, so 31 minutes, and then I'm going to have some lunch. Good me. Ta-da! There's still loads of blue bits in there, but I'm really struggling to sort of rummage through here because this isn't big enough um, to rummage through here and find blue bits. So I'm going to take a break. My issue is with these things. Hey, do you want to see me? <laughs> I get really bad shoulders where I'm like hunched over. So I have to take many breaks. But I've I've listened to... Um, well, I, I, I want to listen to another half hour of uh, Murder of Mr. Wickham and then I'm going to move on to the um, the BBC dra dramatisation of uh, some of the books. It's uh, some of Jane Austen's books. All of Jane Austen's books, six. It starts with Mansfield Park, which I have literally nothing, I have no idea about at all. And then I have got, oh no, I haven't. I thought I had a retelling of Mansfield Park, but I don't. So that's probably quite a good place to start, actually. Um, and then I can move on to another one. So yeah, so I think I'm going to stop and make uh, mozzarella tomato and basil salad for lunch. Oh, I wonder if I've got an avocado. Could have an avocado in that too. Um, and I'm going to read a little bit more of the book. And then I'm going to come back to this and finish off my listening for the day. And then I'll think about watching Sense and Sensibility for the evening. Lovely day, isn't it? Well, my basil plant was smothered in white fly, so it's a simple <laughs> lunch of tomato and mozzarella with a bit of balsamic on top. Which will still be delicious, but basil is nice, but I wasn't risking eating any of that. So I chucked the whole thing. And I'm going to eat this and read a bit. I am tempted. My mum and dad are having a street party today. Because it's the uh, platy tubes. My sister's there. I'm tempted to go around there and just see what food they've got. But it would mean a break in the proceedings of me reading stuff. I could listen on my way around there, I suppose. I might ring my sister and see what's going on. See if the food's worth the trip. I'd also get to see my niece, which would be nice. I mean, my sister's probably not going to answer this. Oh, has the party started yet? Not yet, not yet no. What's, what are we celebrating? Snakes. Snakes? Oh, flags. I'm in two minds of whether to come round or not. And you can convince me if the food's good. I've made a quiche. Mm hmm Do you want me to give you a grand tour? These guys? Well, I am considering... Yeah, can I eat these? Yep, yeah, cheese and tomato. Cheese. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what do we have to do? How much interaction am I expected to do? No, I'm not doing that. Can I sit in the garden? No, you can't. I'll get my plate and sit in the garden. I don't want to overstimulate myself. I don't want to talk to anyone. Oh, I am. I am. I am considering it. Bring something from your salad. I haven't got anything, so I'm coming just to eat. Mum's in blue, blue, white. 
I don't agree with the Queen's Jubilee. Why? Because there's so many people in this country that are starving. Not spend, not let her have a, um, a chair that's 50 million pounds. Right, I'll be round in a minute. I'm back. I had sandwiches, quiche, cake. Ooh, my sister's done me two cheese scones to bring home. And yeah, didn't read any of my book. Stayed in the house as much as I could. I honestly think my um, unsociableness, is that a word? It's getting worse. I always joke that I'm like my dad, because like when I was younger, I remember when we used to go on holiday and stuff like that, my dad would be like, because we used to do a lot of camping holidays, my dad would always feel like be desperate that the person that we would be in a tent next to either side would be not English so that he didn't have to talk to anyone. <laughs> and like, if we were ever at parties and stuff, he never wanted to talk to anyone. I remember being at family parties and him just sort of sitting like with me on his lap or Charlotte on his lap. And now I am that person. <laughs> I am that person who just doesn't really like talking to other people which is really unusual for me like yeah who thought who thought that we'd, we'd be here anyway i'm back now it's five o'clock is it it's quarter to five um i'm really full so i don't know if i'll have any dinner tonight i might just have a cheese scone but i'm gonna watch sense and sensibility tonight i'm gonna listen to a little bit more of me audio mm, no i'm gonna have a cup of tea read a little bit more then i'm gonna listen to more of me audio book and do a bit more puzzle but yeah I need to have a wee first. <laughs> Just had a little read of my book and um, a um, cup of tea. I feel so tired. So I'm going to do a little bit of puzzling. Puzzling! But truth be, truth be told, I don't know how far I'm going to do with it because it takes quite a lot of concentration, doesn't it? We've got three four little carriages five carriages on here so me picking out that wheel thinking oh i've worked out what this is oh, i have worked out what that is because that's a bush there beautiful pink bush actually so yeah i'm gonna do a little bit of this but not loads just because i'm kind of tired <laughs> so i think i'll just do a little bit and then whether or not i actually do end up just going to bed quite early tonight i don't know I've got nothing else. Up. Oh no, because I want to watch. I do want to watch Sense and Sensibility. I do want to watch it. So yeah, I'm gonna have a little. Um, I'm finding out all my pink. Is there only just the one pink bush? There is just the one pink bush. I'm getting my stuff for me, for my pink bush, and then I'll. Um, and then I think I'll concentrate on something else. Do I want all the stuff from the Red House? That might be quite easy to do as well. Yeah, Red House stuff. That's what I'll do. And listen to me, dear book. On her velvety muzzle. Muzzle. Began to patch against the roof again. The stable That's better there. Looks like you'll be staying a while now, eh? Right, I've paused murder of Mr. Wickham. And this is how much I've done. So I'm feeling quite pleased, although, as you can see, the light is failing me now. What I've been doing for the last bit of time is just pulling out anything that's got a face or a body part on it and then, like, matching it up against that and then putting it where it might be. So... It's still a long way to go, and I'll finish it tomorrow. And if I don't finish it tomorrow, I'll finish it Sunday. So yeah, there we go. Do I want dinner? Do I want dinner? David's just rang me. He's um, he had a lovely time at golf today, and he's gone out to get some money. And they're going to be eating in the clubhouse, and he's going to be having a few drinks in the clubhouse with his mates. I bought fresh pasta and mushrooms and I've got some leftover creme fraiche and garlic and stuff like that. So I could make a sort of like mushroomy pasta situation and then watch Sense and Sensibility. I think that's probably the wise thing to do. And then I'm going to, look, she just can't stop. Once you pop, you just can't stop. And then I think I'm going to, no, that doesn't fit anyway. And I think while I'm making dinner, I will listen, continue listening to Mansfield Park. Let me just check that they're in that order on the thing, because it's quite awkward. Um, I'm sure that is. I want more details on this. I want more details on it. Library. This. 
I'm sure it is Mansfield Park that I'm listening to. Yeah, it starts with Mansfield Park, then goes on to Northanger Abbey. So maybe I'll start listening to M Mansfield Park. That's Fanny Price, isn't it? And I've been hearing a bit more about Fanny Price in the uh, Murder of Mr. Wickham. Murder of Mr. Wickham, I'm very much enjoying, by the way. I think it's going to be a bit like a sort of um, Agatha Christie type thing, which I'm quite into. But yeah, maybe I'll go and listen to that and make some pasta. Chop some onions, chop some mushrooms and do that. And then I might watch Sense and Sensibility. And then I might have an early night. I think so. I'm over halfway through the book now, which is pretty good. I know I said I wanted to finish it today, but I didn't I didn't factor in that I'd be going to my parents for a bit. So yeah, I think I'll do that. I'm so tired. Oh. Just go and make some lunch. She watches from a distance. Pasta made! Mansfield Park stock, quite enjoying Mansfield Park. Uh, pasta, mainly mushrooms. And I'm about to crack on with Sense and Sensibility, which is two hours and 10 minutes, which means at the moment I've got a Pride and Prejudice book on the go. Hello, Minnie. I've got Mansfield Park on the go in, the ter in terms of audio play. I'm <laughs> watching <laughs> Sense and Sensibility. And I'm also listening to the audio book of Minnie, you don't like mushrooms. Stop trying to go down there and eat those mushrooms. Um, and I'm also, yeah, listening to uh, The Death of Mr. Wickham, which is all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, I'd say I've definitely got enough Jane Austen content going on, let's be honest. And uh, let's eat this. I'll loosen up my belt before I start eating. In fact, I probably should have pyjama bottoms on, but I'll do that off my boot. Boop! Bye! <laughs> Well, that was good. The, only, the annoying thing is, I really enjoyed it. Directed by Ang Lee as well, which I didn't realise when I started it. Uh, pasta was nice too. Is that well, there was something up with, I, I don't think it's the telly because I've never seen it before, but there was something up with the, I believe it's called Aperture of the film. So anything that was black or dark in colour, which is a lot of it, because a lot of it's of an evening, candlelight, black dresses, things like that. Black, a lot, uh, the men wear a lot of black. It was just, it, it was almost like, you just couldn't see any definition in that. So you just see sort of like <laughs> Alan Rickman's head floating on a black outfit. Um, but I very much enjoyed it. Loads of people in it. Kate Winslet, um, Alan Rickman, as I said, um, Imelda Staunton, Hugh Grant. Very much enjoyed it. And yeah, I've read the book of uh, Sense of Sensibility, as I said when I was looking through my books, because you can tell that it's been held but i don't remember the story though so that was a nice surprise but very much enjoyed it it's now merely 10 past nine and i'm thinking of going to bed i think i might have a hot chocolate in bed from the um velvetizer because i've got quite a lot of milk and we've got another milk delivery coming tomorrow because we didn't think we're getting a milk delivery on thursday because it was bank holiday but the milk delivery still came so um yeah i think i'll have a hot chocolate in bed, read a bit more of Pride and Prejudice and other flavours and maybe have an early-ish night. The thing is though, is I don't want to fall asleep too early and then wake up like three o'clock in the morning unable to get back to sleep because that'll be annoying. But yeah, maybe I'll do that. I need to write down that that's the film that I've watched. I've been, I'm still trying to watch 100, film, 100 new to me films this year and I'm, I was really, really behind because I didn't start... <laughs> my first new to me film I didn't watch until the 19th of February but that was my 29th new film of the year and if I'm on 50 by the end of June that's still quite a lot isn't it but I'll be on track which I've really caught up so sense and sensibility well done me and yeah hopefully I'll be re I'll be watching a few more Jane Austen themed films this month although I have watched a lot of them so um I like to watch Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which I don't think I've seen before. Uh, what is the date today? 3rd of June? Friday, 3rd of June. Um, yeah, so I think I'll go and get in there. So yeah, that was my 32nd film of the year and my 29th new to me film of the year. So, pleased with that. Do a little highlight to show it's new to me. And then I think I'll go and start getting ready for, for bed. I've heard from David, he's having a lovely time. I think that's it. Morning! Morning has broken. I don't have a very good night's sleep actually. I, I, I'm, I'm much better. David works away a lot now, so I have I, I spend a lot of time on my own at home now. <clears throat> He's away this weekend, obviously. But I just want to know he's safe. 
and then I could feel like I can sleep. And last night he left his phone in his hotel room when he went out, so he was unable to text me to say, I'm safe. So I spent the whole night like, oh, am I gonna be able to get to sleep because I'm worried about him? No, I couldn't get to sleep because <laughs> uh, I was worried about him. And then I woke up at, oh, I haven't even got the milk in yet. Five o'clock this morning because the milkman come, I've got to go and get the milk in. And then I fell back to sleep and then Minnie woke me up at half past six, chucking up a fur ball. So yeah, not a very good night's sleep. Um, you just had some deep breakfast, was that nice? Yum, yum, licky lips. Um, so yeah, so today is Saturday. Um, I had plans to go down to the beach with my friend Emma um, and her boyfriend, and we were gonna take a little packed lunch and do that. However, it's really windy, it has been raining, it's not raining at the moment, it's really windy. So I did say the alternative was to come here and we'll have lunch here. Maybe they can help me do my puzzle, etc., etc. But I haven't got any food here to feed them with, so I need to check. They're still happy to um, to provide themselves with a packed lunch to eat here, which feels really cheeky. The only other option I guess we could do is order a subway on Deliveroo, and I could and we could do that. Although that still involves them getting their own food. Um, and then so they're coming around about lunchtime today. I've got some parcels that are being re-delivered, um, which we missed in the week. So I need to make sure I'm here for them. Um, and I also would quite like to... Sorry, baby, you were having a little bath then. I would quite like to finish this today, whether or not I can. So like I said, I'm over halfway through. Um, and I think I'd like to watch... I want to finish Mansfield Park on here today. And I think I'd quite like to watch Mansfield Park tonight. I think it's the one with Billy Piper in it. Um, so yeah, those are the plans for today in terms of reading. So reading this, finishing this hopefully, listening to Mansfield Park and a bit more of The Murder of Mr Wickham, and then watching Mansfield Park tonight. Um, all the other ones, so last night I watched Sense and Sensibility, and that was available on Amazon Prime. All the other ones that I've looked at that are available either on Amazon Prime, as part of Amazon Prime, or on Netflix, um, I've seen. So I'm gonna have to rent one. So yeah, maybe I will rent Mansfield Park. That'll be quite nice, I think. Um, but I've just taken my Lanz Opera because I have to take Lanz because I've got really bad heartburn. So I can't eat anything for half, for half an hour. So I think I'll probably just sit here and read a little bit. I've got to get the milk in first. I'll get the milk in first and then I'll carry on. And I think I'm just gonna have cereal for breakfast. You'll be so cute looking. Oh, I've just sat on the sofa and just read and eaten my breakfast and not really done much else. There's my tummy. Boom. Um, yeah, so it's 11 o'clock. My friend is now, uh, my friend and her boyfriend are now coming round. I suppose they're both my friends. <laughs> are coming round for lunch about 12-ish. I haven't got anything in the house. So, and I can't leave because the parcel still haven't been delivered. So, and also I can't really get in the shower in case they come while I'm in there. Unless I really literally just dash in there. Um, I am... Um, Cracking on with this, we've, we've definitely started going more into the sort of Wickham side of um, things here. And there's a lot here to do with cultural appropriation. There's uh, stuff about Black Lives Matter, uh, gun crime and stuff like that. What I will say, I don't know if there's just too much in this book. And I don't mean it in terms of those very important topics, which I think are, should always should always be included, like should be included in books. But there's just, there's so much going on in here that I think I'm sort it's. it's it, it's trying to do too much I think basically um, and trying to fit in too much and trying to fit in so as well as like there being like these sort of Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet um, people they've confused matters uh, sorry Sonali Dev's confused matters by calling the Elizabeth Bennet character Darcy and then bring trying to bring in other stuff and trying to set up for future books and stuff like that yeah it's just it's yeah there's just a lot going on also the way that the main characters talk to one another is horrible. It's really, really like, and I know like there was there wasn't much love lost between Elizabeth and Darcy to start with, but this is awful. Like every time they have an interaction, I'm like, oh, they're just so passive aggressive with each other, sneering. They've just th there's the postman who's just gone by. Oh, he's turning around. Oh no, he's not. He's going down there. Where's the post then? Um, yeah, they're just it's it's just really not very nice to read. Um, and I think it's sort of like hammered home a bit. So yeah, there's parts of it where I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'm actually, this isn't too bad. And then I think, oh God, now they're talking to each other again and it's all forward. They're just trying to cover too much. He is coming back here. Hopefully he's got my parcels and then I can get in the shower drama free. So yeah, that's that. Let's see if he rings the bell now. <laughs> no. 
Sometimes they bring a van round. If it's booked, sometimes they bring a van round. Maybe I'll do a bit of tidying and hoovering and then I can get in the shower literally last minute. Look at Minnie in her little house. Isn't she just the cutest? We got this. This is the box that our towels arrived in. I think I might even have shown in the Catherine of Aragon vlog. And uh, yeah, she loves it. She's got a little heat pad in there. Not a heat pad, like cooling pad. You're not going to look at us. Gorgeous. And like, I think she really likes it because it's got this door on it. So it means that David and I can't get her. Great news. Packages have arrived. Should probably get them. Um, which means I'll open these now because I think two of them are books um, and then I can walk to the shop before Emma gets here and we don't have to I don't have to wait for them to get here so the first one's from Canongate feels like it's got two books in it let's see what it is I also mid, mid gusto arrived as well which I need to unpack this is oh my year of me <laughs> my Year of Meats by Ruth Azeki, um, which I'm very, very excited about because I read and enjoyed, um, oh my God, what was that one called? The Book of Form and Emptiness. And they, I think they've republished this and this is why it's come out with this. I am vegetarian, so I think I'll really enjoy reading this. I've also got A Tale for the Time Being. And I think when I tried, to, when I attempted to read A Tale for the Time Being, I don't think my mind was in the right place and I don't think I'd read many things like that before. Previously I'd read when I picked it up. It was in my early days of um, booktube and I think I'd only read um, like women's contemporary fiction and maybe like a bit of literary fiction so that was a bit much for me but yeah I'm excited to read this very much and then I've also got Julia Shaw The Hidden Culture, History and Science of Bisexuality. A non-fiction book about bisexuality. That's a lovely front cover isn't it and lovely purple there so great. I'll go into more of those, I imagine, with a book haul. And then this one is from... I don't know who this one's from. This one might be a pre-order. It's got a pre-order vibe about it. Oh, no, it's not. It's the Finnish version I want of I want to die, but I want to eat... And I must learn how to say this properly. Tiok Boki. Um, so I've already had a proof copy of this. And this is now the, fit, the Finnish copy. That's really kind. Thanks so much for your early support. Oh, best wishes. Lovely, from Bloomsbury. So that's nice, isn't it? It's a nice book as well. Purple and green together. Beautiful. Uh, and then I also received uh, some laundry tablets from Small. <laughs> but I won't unbox those for you. So yeah, so I think I'm going to nip to the shop now quickly. Um, and then they'll be here. I might ask them to help me with my Jane Austen puzzle. We won't be able to listen to any Jane Austen, obviously. Imagine if I was like, right guys, pack it in. We're going to listen to Mansfield Park now. But I might get them to help me with that. So got to go to the shop. Be back later. That was a nice little visit I had from my friends. Uh, we had a nice little lunch. French stick. I had mozzarella, uh, basil and tomato. I got them some chicken because I was kind. Um, so yeah. And then we just had a chat. We were going to play some cards. We are going to do a bit of puzzle. And just chatted the whole time, which was really nice. So now, it's just gone half past three. I still got a little bit of my Diet Coke caffeine free to drink. So I'm going to have a little bit more reading. And then I think I'll do my puzzle for for an hour or so before I start thinking about the evening's events. I need to wash my hair at some point. I might do that in the morning though, although I'm gonna be very busy making sandwiches in the morning and I've got to make a quiche and I'm making some rolls. <laughs> Maybe I'll wash my hair tonight. Maybe. Um, so yeah, gonna crack on with this. Right, as I said, we get into the business end of the puzzle. This by the way is what the finished puzzle will look like. Isn't it lovely? I'm going to have this out, which I didn't have out before, which I think is going to help me. Um, Emma did one thing. <laughs> she put the uh, the flag on the ship. So that's that done. But, um, yeah. I, um, hmm. Maybe I'm missing a bit more. Oh, no. That's not, that's like that. Although that's like that. Yeah, so I'm going to, I think I'm just going to sort of take a handful and then just start putting things in areas. Is that a bit much? Maybe not. Um, and yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And listen to Murder of Mr. Wickham. If it had been used in a murder, the weapon would be either put back where it was. Oh, I have been going flat out on my puzzle. So I listened to half an hour of uh, the murder of Mr. Wickham and then I've almost finished it. I can't finish it because it's too dark and also I've been really, really hunched over. But I've almost finished it. Come and have a look. Come and have a look. Look, 
Isn't it lovely? And it's got sort of individual characters. So let's assess this. So who have we got down here? So these people are, this is what looking tells me. So number 22, is that number 22? No. Oh, here we go. Number 44 is these guys. I think they're the officers, aren't they, from Pride and Prejudice? Let's have a look. Yeah, it is. It's Elizabeth Younger Sisters, 42 and 43. So here they are. That's um, Kitty and Lydia. And they're flirting with the officers. So yeah, the whole thing's filled with things like that. It's lovely, isn't it? But I've been going abs... Hold on, I'll put you back on the chair, on the um, stand. So yeah, like I said, I've been going absolutely flat out. So I've listened to Mansfield Park. I've watched Sense and Sensibility last night. I'm reading a book associated with Pride and Prejudice. So tonight I either want to watch or re uh, watch... Yeah, I want to watch something to do with Emma, Persuasion or Northanger Abbey. I might watch Emma, the, the one that I've already seen, because I do really like that. I think I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna make some dinner first, and then I'll think about it. It's been Jane Austen-tastic. Mansfield Park actually really creased me up, because there's a bit where, so it's basically, it's all about Franny Price. I'm going to do a lot of these stories of the same story, uh, told over, sort of like, wayward man tries to lure, girl away anyway Fanny Price doesn't accept a engagement proposal and the people she's in with her aunt and uncle want to convince her to accept it and they send her back to her mum's house in Portsmouth where she hasn't been for years it's a really busy house loads of kids they've only really got eyes for the sun and it was so well acted, like voice acted, because literally, within seconds of her arriving there, she's like, fuck this, <laughs> don't marry anyone, <laughs> just get me away. Um, which I found really funny. So yeah, anyway, I should stop eating Chris really, as soon as I'm making dinner. I'm going to home, Gusto arrived today, creamy coronation chickpea salad, which I've had before. Now, that's for two people. I'm making it for one. If I don't finish it, I'll put the gubbins into a salad tomorrow, into a sandwich tomorrow. But yeah, I think I am gonna watch Emma tonight. I am tempted to watch Mansfield Park, but I think in the spirit of trying to cover as many Austin things as possible, I think I'll, um, I think I will watch Emma. And by the way, I think I'm going to start, shall I start listening to Northanger Abbey? I mean, then I would have covered like five of the six. Maybe I will. I think I'm going to, I'm going to start listening to Northanger Abbey. And I've got a retelling of Northanger Abbey, a Val McDermid one, which I might start once I've finished Pride, Prejudice and other flavours. Well, I mean, I've actually got through a lot more Jane Austen than I thought I would these past two days. Stop eating. Start cooking. Salad done. Looks nice, doesn't it? I never can do this. There we go. Chickpea salad. Um, and I put. I got my fingers stuck. Ow. Um, I've just put Emma on. It's quarter to eight. Emma's two hours four minutes long. I'm looking forward to it. I've done it once before, David and I watched it and I really enjoyed it. It's got Jummy from Call the Midwife in it. And actually, I'm listening to Northanger Abbey and that's got Sister Julienne from Call the Midwife in it. Lovely time. Let's crack on. Well, I really, really enjoyed that a lot. I've, I've watched it last year for the first time and I loved it then. Um, but I loved it even more this time. I really like the fact that they don't shy away from the fact that Emma is a bit of a bitch. Um, I found it so funny that this is the Anya Taylor-Joy one. She is so good and I feel like she has real good chemistry with whoever, like I've seen her in Peaky Blinders. Um, and she has really good chemistry with whoever she's sort of like on screen with. And I think it's Johnny Flynn plays Mr Knightley and they're great in it together. I really loved it. I was like smiling the whole way through. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, I'm so glad I watched it. Oh God, I'm so tired. It's not even 10 o'clock yet. 
10 to 10. Um, so yeah, so I'm very pleased with my sort of progress on these two days. So I haven't finished my book, which is what I hope to do. I'm, I'm probably about two thirds of the way through. I've got this much left. I'm going to read a bit more of that before I go to bed, but I'll say goodbye now. So that's Pride and Prejudice I've been reading an adaptation of. I've listened to the audiobook of Mansfield Park. I've watched the film Emma. And I watched Sense and Sensibility last night as well. So that's four of the six. So I've got Persuasion and Northanger Abbey, which I've actually started listening to. I've started listening to Northanger Abbey, um, the radio play of it. But yeah, it's going really well. And I've had a really good sort of two days of doing it. And like, I wouldn't have got this, that much done had David been here. I wouldn't have watched the two films that I watched. And yeah, I'm probably going to watch... I'm looking forward to re-watching the Keira Knightley Pride and Prejudice because it's got Matthew McFadgian playing Darcy. And I know him as Tom Womscans now in... Uh... Oh my God, what's that programme called? Succession. Also, the, the woman who plays the mum in Succession, she was in Sense and Sensibility yesterday. But yeah. Good couple of days. <sighs> I suppose I'll just get ready and go to bed now. I'm a bit cold, actually, in June. Imagine, under a blanket. I mean, I love it. Um, but, yeah, thank you for joining me for um, a Jane Austen reading vlog. And I'll see you all again soon for another butcher video. Goodbye!